this is a GIS News Hour for Monday, May 30th, 2011. I am Abigail McIntyre. Coming up, Bureau of Standards issues recall of portable cribs, judicial manager appointed for Clico International Life in Grenada, and Petro Carib partners with government to illuminate lives and energize hope. And in sports, Grenada wins Windward Islands Win Lotto 2020 cricket competition. Details of these and other stories after the break. Sometimes, the simplest joys in life can be the most rewarding. For quality sexual and reproductive health care services, make the GPPA your next stop. Visit our offices at St. George's and Grenville. Call 440-3341 or 442-5442 for more information. The Grenada Planned Parenthood Association, promoting healthy living. Do you really want to save on the cost of posting? Grenada Postal Corporation is the answer. We offer convenience, online tracking, reliability, on-time delivery, and of course, on beatable prices, on express parcels and registered mailing. Ask about your online visa application and notification by email service. Grenada Postal Corporation, a member of the UPU, the world's oldest network. Send, receive, delivered. Welcome back. The Grenada Bureau of Standards has issued a recall of portable cribs made in China following a voluntary recall of the products by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. Director of the Grenada Bureau of Standards, Mr. Simeon Collins, says the Bureau has contacted the retailers who distribute the cribs, warning them of the impending dangers. They are drop-side wooden cribs, partial or stained in black, cherry, dark brown, white and pink. Based on the release, the dropside rail hardware can break or fail for allowing the dropside to detach from the crib or fall unexpectedly. In addition, the portable crib mattress support hardware and the dropside release latch can break easily and the slots can loosen or break and detach from the cribs. Children can also cut themselves on exposed hardware inside the cribs. Mr. Collins says people who have already purchased these cribs need to contact their retail outlet as soon as possible. What happened is that the dropside on the crib seems to be detached from the crib and then it falls over unexpectedly. They also say that in a number of cases, children were able to cut themselves on the exposed hardware inside of the crib. So as a result, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission has recalled these cribs. What we did here in Grenada is that we did check to find out whether they were on our local market and we did find them on the market. So we have already spoken to the retail outlets who have also um, discontinued the sale of the cribs. But we have not been able to reach out to consumers who may have already bought the cribs and have them at home. So we hope, therefore, through this medium, we are able to inform persons who may have bought these cribs and have them at home that they should return them to the place of purchase because they are not safe, especially for kids. There have been at least 69 reports of incidents involving these scripts in the United States. Fortunately, there have been no cases of injury in Grenada. We haven't heard of any incidents here in Grenada. All the incidents seem to be in the U.S. as far as we know, but it is exactly the same product, so we have to take precautions. But from speaking to the retailers who have um, brought these scripts in, do you, do you think they have a great understanding of the importance of recalling the products? Yes, 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 certainly. The moment they, they realized that it was in their store, they were quick to, to take them off the shelves. And that we have to recognize, you know, the retailers for that. 
The label lists a manufacture date between January 2006 and December 2009. Mr. Oliver Jordan of the Barbados firm of Deloitte Consulting has been appointed as Judicial Manager for Clico International Life Insurance in Grenada. His appointment by the Supreme Court follows a petition from the Grenada Authority for the Regulation of Financial Institutions, GAFIN, the Supreme Court, on Tuesday, May 17. Mr. Jordan was appointed Judicial Manager in Barbados on April 13 for Clico International Life Insurance Barbados. Barbados, with, which is the headquarters of the Grenada operations. But to operate in Grenada, he needed to be appointed locally. The judicial manager is required to provide an interim report to the court on the operations of Clico Life in Grenada within 30 days of his appointment. He is also required to report within 90 days of his appointment, indicating which course of action would be most advantageous to the general interest of policyholders. The court also appointed Ms. Perlina Sylvester of the firm of PKF Accountants and Business Advisors advises as the local agent of the judicial manager. The Assistant Secretary General for Trade and Economic Integration in the CARICOM Secretariat has been tooting the importance of a single ICT space in the Caribbean community. Ambassador Erwin Larocque says this could allow for a reduction in the cost of broadband internet access and possibly tackle the subject of roaming charges and long-distance calls within the community. He says members must put their heads together to make this a reality. The day should come when uh a call from Grenada to St. Lucia or Grenada to Guyana should not be a long distance call and that we are treated as one community and that can be done only if the member states come together and negotiate with the service providers uh, as a collective and, and set the broad parameters on how we want to treat our ICT space because the service providers are not operating in their space, they are operating in our space, the community space and I think one of the, for me one of the most critical um, um, recommendations coming out of the strategy and the discussions that we've had is precisely to seek to coordinate a market that we will seek to bring those, those things to bear on our, to the benefit of our member states and our people of the community. Ambassador Larocque was in Grenada for the 36th special meeting of the Council for Trade and Economic Development under which ICT falls. The meeting was held at the Grenadian Birex Resort to discuss the draft regional digital development strategy and the strategic objectives of the implementation plan. This strategy is a daunting one because of the amount of work that needs to be done. Ambassador de Larocque says in order to succeed, the community needs to prioritize and sequence some activities. It's one thing to uh, prepare a strategy and an implementation plan and you don't have the resources to do it. We know our member states are resource constrained. We know some of our institutions are resource constrained. So we have to see how we take that into account in, in terms of the implementation that we want to put in place. Also, a strategy would help us to talk to our development partners, our donors. If we can go to them and say we now have an adopted strategy, an adopted action plan, and um, we can then have discussions in terms of how the donors can provide funding for certain aspects of it. So while it is daunting uh, in its own, its own self, it will allow us to be able to speak to the donors in a more concerted way as representing the region views on where, where they want to take, the, uh, take ICT in the next five years. Okay, in your own opinion, Ambassador, is it a workable strategy? I think it's workable, but it's going to mean that we have to drill down as far as possible into the specifics. Implementation takes place at the member states level. There are some things, of course, that is done at the regional level, um, but implementation takes place at the member states level. And I think um, uh, the approach we've taken is that the strategy, while it's a five-year period, is going to be a rolling period so that um, not everything will be accomplished in the five-year period. Um, and that we will do uh, periodic revisions in terms of the timelines and in terms of the what we have to do. But I think there are certain basic elements that are very workable and highly desirable. And once you start putting those things in place, the others can fall in place sequentially. I don't think it will serve us well if we say we're going to do everything within the five-year period. Our experience in the community, given certain constraints that we have, has proven that you need to really carefully plan how you do implementation. 
Petra Karib is partnering with the government of Grenada to illuminate lives and energize hope. Government launched its energy poverty relief program on Friday with the distribution of the first quarter of stoves and accessories and a 20-pound cylinder of cooking gas to those most in need. Stoves are being distributed according to family size. These range from one to three burner tabletop stoves to four burner stoves with an oven. The 20-pound cylinder will be refilled six times on presentation of a voucher to the dealer. The program focuses on the eradication of energy poverty by enabling people to access adequate, affordable and sustainable energy. Prime Minister the Honorable Tillman Thomas says the struggle against poverty is one we must all be involved in with government providing critical support. We have to get involved in that struggle because we have to attack poverty on all fronts. Education is one, another, one of the areas we have to educate our, our young people so that they would be equipped to make a meaningful contribution in our society. Education is one of the means of fighting poverty. We also have to provide support through our programs, whether it's subsidizing bus fares, other programs to, to help our, our people in whatever they are doing. So poverty is something that we are committed to fighting poverty on all fronts. Again, we believe that we have resources here in our country, and if we could really train our people, identify the resources, and get them involved in certain activities, we could really increase productivity and make ourselves more prosperous as a people. Social Development Minister, the Honorable Sylvester Qualis, says the project aims to reduce the reliance on biomass material like firewood and charcoal as the main source of energy. The world is challenged to provide a secure supply of clean energy that does not adversely affect the climate. In addition, billions of people globally lack access to clean environmentally friendly energy and electricity supply. Lack of access to these basic commodities hinders economic and social development. It is against this background that this pilot project was conceived and been given birth at this launch today. We have also completed the targeting for a more comprehensive project to be financed by OPEC to retrofit the homes of the poor and vulnerable, providing them with electricity, water, gas stove, and accessories. Homes that are, the homes that are assessed as not being able to accommodate stoves in this pilot project will be covered under the expanded project. We believe that our people need a hands up, not hands out. A member of the Petro Kerry Board, Vincent Roberts, commended the government for tying into the program the preservation of the environment. We have an obligation to preserve the, the earth for the children who are yet unborn. We speak of the pollution of the air. We speak of the, the sea. We speak of the land. These are the things that we have to look at and see how we can save it. So in all that you do, we, we ask you please, we know we are going through tough economic times. It may be hard at times. The program gives you gas, I think, for six months. Try and see how we can avoid cutting down the trees again. Let us see how we can do. We, we know the government may have to look at other programs for the sustainability. But we are convinced that working in partnership with the government, Petrocarib will ensure that this program continues and that the objectives of the government are received. The official opening took place at the St. Patrick Burst Terminal. Distribution will take place in all parishes. Member of the Energy Poverty Relief Program Committee, Ms. Judy Williams, challenged the government to ensure the program remains sustainable. I do not believe that it is enough for us only to speak about the energy poor in the context of what we have that I do not, I am not sure is sustainable, which is the LPG gas. Yes. So I, in a way, I'm challenging because I hope that we will move from this project
to another project, one that would use up what we have in this country in abundance, which is the energy, the natural energy. And we will see a, a project that will come on stream that is utilizing the natural energy, namely the sun. And we could use the sun to do some of the things that we are doing with LPG gas. The stoves, accessories and the cylinders remain the property of the government for two years and each family representative must sign a document stating that they agree to the terms. Grenadians living abroad are ready and excited about returning for Spice Mass 2011. That's the general consensus according to Culture Minister Senator Arlie Gill having launched Carnival in Toronto, Canada and London, England. These fall under the ministry's marketing and promotional strategy for the Carnival season. Senator Gill says both events were successful, especially that in London. London, of course, was on the 14th of May. And there we held an activity, um, you know, which was attended by High Commissioner with Rogues, as well as our Ambassador to the European Union, Honorable um, His Excellency Stephen Fletcher. And um, it was well attended by Grenadians. Of course, we had um, some of our top entertainers in London, um, Brother B, um, Killer, um, Batman George, Finley Jeffrey, the scholar, uh, Andrew Greenwich as a panist, um, River makes the band, and um, the show was, was excellent, uh, well received, well attended. Um, in Toronto, we um, went on the 21st of May, and we had one here at Carnival Expo in the afternoon time, and then we had um, an event, a party sort of event in the night. Um, there were less attendance at the Expo event, but the Expo e event was well conceived. That's where we had um, a history of Maria Carnival, a history of the Shotney Mass. We had Shotney Mass portrayals. And um, we had other um, Grenadian groups and, and in the diaspora in Toronto exhibiting some of what they do, whether it be in fashion and whether it be um, in Carnival and other things. Minister Gill says launching Carnival Abroad not only has numerous economic benefits for the country, but is an opportunity to promote Grenada's culture and heritage to foreigners. Senator Gill believes that this year's Carnival event will be, in his words, a bumper success. We have the, regulars, the regular persons who will come regardless. Every Carnival will be here. But we believe that if we make a more concerted effort, we can have more Grenadians coming here. And when they are coming, the message is that you bring your friends, you bring someone from the other islands, you bring someone who is native to the US or the UK to Canada in the cases. So that we must continue with that aggressive push in marketing and promoting our carnival. At the same time, our artists themselves is getting an opportunity um, to perform um, in the diaspora. And you know, some of them have, because of those performances, are receiving contracts to return to the diaspora to perform. So it's a win-win situation for us. Um, we just have to ensure that we can continue the efforts. Um, hopefully that you know in the future, private sector will see um, the benefits of partnering with us to ensure that those launches can be bigger and more successful. The culture minister says another major promotional launch will be in Port of Spain, Trinidad on June 28. Minister Gil says the Twin Republic is a major market for masqueraders attending Spice Mass. We are now going to Trinidad on the 28th of June to do a major showcase in Trinidad. Trinidad being one of our critical markets, our strategic markets. It's a straight flight to Grenada from Trinidad. It's only 30 minutes. Um, Trinidad, of course, have a great um, history and culture of fete and lime and partying. And Trinidad have a, mass, have, have a large middle class. We believe on top of that, um, there are so many Trinidadians with Grenadian roots. So that we believe if we can tap into um, the 1.3 million people of Trinidad and Tobago, and we can and now that we have Caribbean Airlines doing the weekly flights alongside the Yacht, we believe that we do have some um, capacity to carry a significant number of Trinidadians to Grenada Carnival if we can market and promote our carnival properly in the Trinidad market. Already for the year, we have done a press conference in Trinidad, but we, we are going down now on the 28th to showcase a bit of Grenada's culture and Grenada artists to say to them, look, Trinidad, you can come up. 
to, to be ready for carnival. So that is that is a critical and strategic initiative for us for launching of, of spice mass in, in Port of Spain. Carnival will officially be launched in Grenada on Saturday, June 4th at the National Stadium. You're watching the GIS News Hour. More news after the break. Uniquely rooted in our rich ancestral traditions. Feel, feel the energy at Spice Mass 2011, Grenada, July 22nd to August 9th. Home of 100,000 Jam Jam. The Caribbean's biggest summer festival and the safest carnival on earth. Spice Mass 2K11. It's all about Juve, traditional mass, pan, soca, the best street party in the world. Monday night mass, Spice Mass, Grenada, July 22nd to August 9th. Home of one. 100,000 Jab Jabs. Log on now to www.spicemassgrenada.com for more info. I bet you didn't know that in the last population and housing census, he had more females than male in Grenada. So let me see what will happen in this one from May 12, 2011. So when you see them census people coming, welcome them, hold your dog, and give accurate and complete information. It is vital and all information will be treated very confidential. And in case they miss you when they pass, call the office on telephone 440-1369 or the coordinator in your area. Census is all of us. Equal you plus me plus the rest are we. The National Population and Housing Census, May 12, 2011. Count me in. Welcome back to the broadcast. The question of one's income has become an issue for enumerators carrying out the National Housing and Population Census. Deputy Census Officer Beryl and Clarkson told GIS News that since the start of the census process, one reoccurring problem has been people's unwillingness to state what their income is. Details in this report. Deputy Census Officer Beryllyn Clarkson says questions on a family or person's income is critical to the information needed in successfully completing the census. The National Population and Housing Census started a few weeks ago on May 12. Since then, enumerators were deployed in various communities and villages to conduct the survey. A host of questions have been listed on the document, some of which is considered private and confidential. Even so, it has been justified why such questions need to be answered and truthfully, as it plays a pivotal role in ensuring each Grenadian is counted for in any governmental project or program. Ms. Clarkson told the GIS that the enumerators have been given strict orders to keep all information gathered confidential, and if it is breached, they will face the full force of the law. We have had persons who have had issue with items, and the item has always been persons who do not want to give information about their income. So the income, but what I'd like to assure the public is that the income question, there is a flashcard that the enumerators are supposed to use, and the information, it's going to be taken within that band. So they do not have to fear, no one would pinpoint them as to see what is the dollar figure that they're working for. The other thing I want people to be mindful of is that if you work for the Central Statistical Office and by extension the National Census Office, you would have been issued an ID, which is signed by the director, Mr. Halim Brazan. It's a nice laminated ID with the government of Grenada, the person's face and their job description if they are enumerator or supervisor. At the flip side, it is signed by the director and it says that this person of this area is authorized to do whatever. Persons should be very careful and if persons cannot produce an ID and they do not have a census bag, 
Now the census bag is where you keep your forms, visitation record, your control forms, so returning the forms that you would have done. And the reason that we have taken the pains to give persons the bag is that we do not want persons walking around with a clipboard and anyone would have seen whatever the answer is. When the interview is finished face to face, it's supposed to be placed in the bag, stayed there until you yourself would have gone over it, your supervisor or your enumerator, and then or your area coordinator, and then return to the office. Ms. Clarkson says each question has a purpose and importance in the process. So this morning we had a, I had a call from a nursing student who wanted information as to the breakdown of the persons living in the community of Vendom, male, female, and age. If we don't do the census, we can't give that information. And therefore, persons would not be able to, the nurses in particular, in the health area, they would not be able to better plan for their district. So I'd like persons to understand it's really important. It happens only once every 10 years. And they should try and give us as much information as they can. We have reports from the sub-offices, the sub-offices being the census office here in St. George's, where town, the north and south are housed on the other side, on the other, the other office. The St. John, St. Mark's, St. Patrick's, St. Andrew's, St. Davis and Caracou. What I could say from our area coordinators meeting St. David's the persons have been very, very cooperative, more than the rest of the island. St. Andrews, they're going okay, career cool, completion. Right now, I have not had all figures in front of me to tell you who is 30% or if anybody's 10% complete. That number I cannot give you at this point in time. But across the board, we have everyone looking cooperative. An alternative feature has been added to the sense process called office enumeration. It's where people can go to the census headquarters on the Caranage in St. George's and have their information recorded. Office enumeration means that persons can walk off the street, come into the office and be enumerated here, I mean counted here. We would administer the whole questionnaire to them. We would have to take from the persons their location and make sure that we fit them back into where their usual place of residence would normally be. Why I say this is because Grenada is divided into parishes. When we do our enumeration, we have to subdivide these parishes into smaller units so that people can work. We move from parishes down to supervisory districts, and these supervisory districts have at least five to six EDs in them. These enumeration, small enumeration districts from the supervisory districts, they are about 125 to 150 households at the lower end. Upper end, you'd get about 175 to 225 in an ED. So we need to be able to put people where they are located in the island, on the island. So we have to Although we're offering it, we have to be careful as well as to locate people where they are. Deputy Census Officer Beryl and Clarkson, the National Housing and Population Census is carded to be completed by year end. One of Grenada's more well-known fashion designers is embarking on an initiative that will help young girls who cannot afford to attend their graduation ball. Simone Loreni is the driving force behind the non-profit organization, the Fairy Godmother Foundation. The foundation has been collecting graduation ball gowns from past students, which are cleaned and in some instances given a facelift so that a student who cannot afford can use to attend her ball. Ms. Loreni says they are absorbing all the costs for cleaning and for cleaning the gowns and getting them ready, but they must be returned after the graduation ceremony. 
We're starting with the first school, which is on um, the 15th of this month. Mm -hmm. And what we're aiming to do is to be able to help every school down the line. We will go to the next ball, the next ball, and the yeah. next ball after that. Um, obviously, it's uh, the logistics now of getting the dresses back because the girls will not be allowed to keep the dresses. Okay, okay. It's a bank, right. and they have to return right. the money to the bank. <laughs> The Obviously, the clothes being the money, of right. course. But right? you take the pictures in it. Exactly. And nobody knows. Exactly. I mean, they do that in some parts of the world. Eh? Right. They, right. Re so they return it to the precisely. bank. And a month later, two months down the line, somebody else is able to right. attend their ball wearing that right. dress or wearing another pair of shoes or accessories. Right. So that's the whole idea of it. As I say, we're bearing the brunt of all the, the, the coverage right now. We're maintaining the dresses and um, keeping them to a standard with the girls and it's not everything that we receive is perfect but we fix it Good. you know it might be a little dated we, we we modernize it a little bit and we have that expertise and you have that capacity yes we do <laughs> so we're fortunate in that sense contributions can be dropped off at the craft center in lagoon road miss lorraine says they plan to take the venture further in the future the aim is to continue um, for the future. We're even looking at the areas where, you know, it could be their first interview that mm. they do not have a professional way for that we can assist them with. You see, we are working with the neediest of needies. These are okay. the, the girls who cannot afford or in a situation where they cannot afford. Mm. And the way the girls will come to us is they will be recommended by the principal and the teachers. We're not going to take everybody off the road because mm. that is not the aim. Mm. The aim is to assist the neediest of the neediest to go to their balls. Mm. People desirous of making contributions to the Fairy Godmother Foundation can contact members at telephone numbers 435-9844 or cell 534-1220. The Grenada National Council for the Disabled has embarked on a $1 drive to fund an accessible multi-purpose center for people living with disabilities in Grenada. It was launched at the grounds of the ministerial complex on Monday morning. Public Relations Officer Anne Hopkin thanked the first patrons of the drive. She says working together collaboratively, co collaboratively on initiatives such as these can see much needed funds targeted towards other programs. I must say thank you all for being here. The Governor General, the Prime Minister, the Minister of Social Service, we thank you very much. You have said the president, president that everyone should follow. And this money is going to be a multi-purpose center for the disabled. We have to remember that they may be disabled, but they are not incapable. We just need to give them a chance to, to do a nurture them in the way that we should as the public. We need to help them. We need to bring them to us. We need to make awareness, people are aware, that although they have a disability, they are capable of doing many things. That's Public Relations Officer of the GNCD, Anne Hopkin. Containers have been placed throughout the island so that people can contribute towards the building of the center. The center will house conference rooms, massage rooms, a training room, a braille room, and persons in the white cane industry. President of the Council, Hilary Gabriel, says for years people have been struggling to cope with the circumstances of their Scott Street office. She hopes in the coming weeks, Grenadians can donate generously towards this worthy cause. Different ministries, the permanent secretaries and so came around. Can I have a box to assist you upstairs? And this is what we wanted and I think we have so far achieved part of the objective. And we hope that the momentum keeps up like it has started. As we need to make things better for persons with disabilities. It takes time. Rome was not built in a day and I, I really want to urge persons with disabilities. Let us not get too complacent but bear with us as we try to make things better for persons with disabilities. Thank you, Ms. Gabe. You're watching the GIS News Hour Sports is next with Trevor Thwaites. Stay with us.
Opportunities are available for Grenadians to pursue undergraduate studies in Venezuela for the academic year 2011. Scholarships are being offered in Integrate Communitarian Medicine and Food Engineering at the bachelor level and Tourism at the associate and bachelor levels. Applicants must be 18 years or older, unmarried, and should be a high school graduate for no more than five years. In the case of medical studies and other specialties, applicants must not be older than 24 years of age. Fully completed application forms must reach the scholarship desk no later than Monday, June 6, 2011. Additional information can be accessed through the Human Resource Development Division and Scholarship Desk, Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development. Telephone 440-27. Canadians, get active, eat healthy. It's Nutrition Week, May 30 through the 3rd of June. Yum! Some new and exciting sweet potato dishes at Camp Raymond on Tuesday, May 31st. On the 3rd of June, treat yourself to some delectable cassava dishes on the Carina. And in the evening, we watch GFNC play netball against Queen's Park Rangers on the River Road Hard Court. And don't forget to do a variety of physical activity today and every day. Take a PA timeout. No plates for Chris Gill and the West Indies team to face India in the opening games of the forthcoming series in the region against India. Grenada wins the Win Lotto Win Islands uh, 2020 Cricket Tournament in Dominica, and the Spice Boys lose two goals to nil to Panama in Panama City in their final warm-up game before the Gold Cup. Uh, this is another GIS Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. Uh, first off, cricket, and there's no room for the master blaster Chris Gale and the West Indies team for the upcoming for the opening matches of the Digital One Day Series against India. Word from the West Indies Cricket Board is that it needs to meet with Gale regarding comments he made in a radio interview in Jamaica before possible selection. After being the star, they just ended Indian Premier League IPL, where he won the MVP in six of the nine matches he contested, playing for the Royal Challengers Bangalore. Gale was expected to be a key figure in the upcoming series against India. But the WICB says that Gale will not be considered until he meets with the selection committee the WICB management and the West Indies management team. As such, he has not been included in the 2020 squad and the 14-man contingent selected for the one day, the opening one-day internationals against India in the series started next week. Uh, there's also no room for fast bowler Jerome Taylor, with the selection committee saying that he's required to play a full season of regional cricket to prove his fitness. The 12-man squad chosen for the 2020 engagement on the 4th of May in Port of Spain is Darren Sammy, the captain, Christopher Banwell, Devinder Bishu, Andrea Fletcher, Danza Hayat, Ashley Nurse, Ravi Rampol, Andrea Russell, Marlon Samuels, Chris Mar Santoki, Lyndall Simmons, and Darren Bravo. Meantime, the 14-man squad announced for the first and second one internationals against India is Sammy the captain, Dwayne Bravo, Carlton Baugh, Carlton uh, Devinger Bishu, Darren Bravo, Kirk Edwards, uh, Anthony Martin, Kieran Pollard, Ravi Rampol, Andrew Russell, Marlon Samuels, Ramnari Ram Sawan, and Lyndall Simmons. Well, the national career team returned home to a warm reception Monday morning after winning the Win Lotto Winner Islands uh, cricket tournament over the weekend in Dominica. After an uncertain start, which saw them lose by 65 runs to St. Vincent and the Grenadines in their opening game, Grenada rebounded uh, strongly with wins over St. Lucia and Dominica. Grenada defeated Dominica twice within three days to win the competition, first in the preliminaries by three runs in the final by an emphatic 75 or 77 runs. Batting first, Grenada scored 156 for 5, with West Indies player Devon Smith scoring 79, and newcomer Ted Carmichael 44. Dominic can reply humble humble for just 79 in 14.1 overs. A fast bowler Leland Pascal bagged 3 for 20. Skipper Andrew Fletcher is delighted with the success, which he credits to a good all-round team performance. I must say I was well pleased, you know, knowing that um, 
I had Captain Grenada for the first time and won a, a tournament. You know, I would like to say them guys supported me very well. And it's nice to see, you know, um, with the, with the um, you know, extension of Smith coming out there and performing. And, you know, it's a total team effort. I was so happy. You, you lost the first match. That should have been a bit of a concern for you. Um, not really, you know. Um, knowing that we, we travel on Thursday and play on Thursday, I think, you know, because of fatigueness, that's why we lost the first game. But we pulled off, we went back, you know, plan well and execute our plans very well. And that's why we win the, the, the second and third game. You did, in fact, have a closer one just by three runs. That was a little bit too tight for comfort. Well, um, we weren't expecting Dominica to come at our, um, that hard at us. But, you know, that's cricket. You know, it's not good to underestimate any team. And I think we learned from that. That's why we beat them so bad in the finals. Thatcher says that uh, winning the winning performance was led by Devon Smith, Tate Carmichael, Dennis George and Nilan Pascoe. It's good to see Tate Carmichael. I think he played a very, very um, um, good, um, good role. You know, to see his first tournament and he, he came out there, you know, play his natural game. It's nice to see Smithy as a senior player, you know, stepping up and, you know, doing him well with his bat. And um, Neil and Pascal also, even Dennis Judge. And, you know, as I said again, it's a mm. total team effort. What about your own individual performance, uh, your own I, thoughts? Well, I didn't do bad. Um, I came off with 250s, you know, but I think I should have done better. Skipper Andre Fletcher. Manager Junior Murray, the former West Indies player, says that wearing the national colours with pride and dignity were the main attributes for the team's success. This, he says, was very evident after the uncertain start. I think it was a fantastic effort from the guys to play good cricket. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we came up victorious. You had a bit of a hiccup, though. You lost the first match. Was that a bit of a concern? Yeah, the first match was a bit of a concern. I thought, I think it was a bit of a, our travel arrangements. We travelled all day and had to play in the night, so I think it was... The guy wasn't really focused, was a bit tired. But once he got over that huddle, uh, we bounced back and, 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 and played good, good cricket at the end. What is it you did to come out from that first match, you feel? There must have been some little strategy that you would have employed to, to, to bounce I think, back. I think just the will to win and the pride, and the pride playing for our country. Like I keep instilling in the, that in those guys all the time. We got to play for our country, play with pride and play with passion. And we did that. And National uh, manager, cricket manager to Junior Murray. Meantime, five Grenadians have been selected in a 13-man squad chosen by the Winnet Islands for the 2011 West Indies 2020 competition later in the year. Devon Smith, Andre Fletcher, Nilan Pascal, Dennis George and Tate Carmichael are the ones to have impressed the selectors. It is particularly sp a special moment for young Tate Carmichael, who was very impressive in his very first outing. Well, I was real nervous when I went into bat. I was real nervous and then, you know, and he had a senior player there with me, Devon Smith, and he told me, you know, just back yourself for playing a normal game. So, and I just go out there and just do that. How did you go about pacing yourself? I know you just said that Devon helped you a bit, but uh, what was going through your mind? What were some of the things that you had to, to do to, to go on to do pretty well? Well, I, I know once, you know, I just spent about sometimes in the wicket, you know, just not nudge ball around, get myself going, get myself sweating. I know that I will be dangerous in, in coming down to the end then. What are some of the things Devon really told you in the middle? You know, just keep just keep batting, play positive, you know, pick the right set of balls and stuff. Where does Tate Michael go from here? Well, I'll get picked and, and to the Winwood's team. You know, we have a couple of um, practice games to go and play, so I really, I really want to, you know, go out there and perform and get on the final 13. Yeah, that's one of the uh, top uh, players, and they just ended uh, Win Lotto or Win Islands. Uh, 2020 competition that cricket tournament has played in Dominica, Tate Carmichael. We say congratulations to the team and especially to the manager, Junior Murray, and new captain, Andre Fletcher, for getting the job done in their for very first outing. Further afield, England scored a shocking win over Sri Lanka in the first test on Monday in Cardiff. With more than a day's play lost because of rain, England produced a big second innings bowling performance to topple the visitors for just 82 runs. Graham Swan captured 4 for 16 and the fast bowler Chris Tremlett 4 for 32 to undermine the Sri Lankans. Stuart Broad took the other wickets. Sri Lanka scored 400 in their first innings with the highlights being a century by Prasanna Jayawadeen and half centuries by skipper Jilchan and Parani Paranabitana. England responded strongly, reaching 496 for five declared. Jonathan Trott scored 203, Alistair Cook 133, and Ian Bell 
103 not out, uh, but uh, the Sri Lankans didn't fare well in their second innings, being just dismissed for 82 in their second innings. England winning by an innings and 14 runs. In football, Grenada was on the losing end in its final warm-up game against Panama on Saturday in Panama City. The national team went down two goals to nil after conceding in each half. Nonetheless, reports of the Panama City say that the team matched the opponents play for play, moves for moves, and could have had a positive result had they taken the several goal current chances they were offered. Nonetheless, there is a strong belief in the GFA and in Grenada that the team will give a good account of itself in the Gold Cup starting on the 5th of June. Grenada starts its campaign with the game against uh, Jamaica on June the 6th. Teams are high in the, and the, that the spoils, despised boys can progress beyond the first round. We're expecting to be in the second round. Now, um, ultimately, we've, still, we've got the work to do. Um, no matter what we say at this stage, the, the, the best 12 teams in the region are, have got to there, so nobody's a mug. So, and we, we'll be going into every game with the, um, with the attitude that we'll, we'll give them the respect that they're due, but no more than they're due. We're certainly not going to approach any game with fear. That's coach Mike Adams, and skipper Anthony Modest says that the boys believe they can advance. We looking at Jamaica. I know Jamaica probably looking at us also and saying um, that's three points. But we have the same feeling, especially from Jamaica. If, if we can get Jamaica three points, or at least not lose the first game, mm -hmm. it will boost well for us. How about Honduras? Well, as like I said before, Honduras, we have a thing with them because uh, they gave us four or five the last tournament. Uh, they were what was their strength? I thought they was pretty skillful. They were rather fit. And we, we haven't played at that kind of level, or the majority of us haven't played on that kind of level. But where we gain the experience, we know what to look forward to. Right, and you'll not give them time to hold the ball and settle with it. We will press, pressure them. Yeah, definitely. We, yeah. I think we will play first. Coach them off the ball. We'll be in their feet, right, true. What about um, uh, Guatemala? Well, first time I, playing Guatemala? Yeah, I, I don't know much about Guatemala, but um, if Guinea goes out as a unit and play as we know we're supposed to play, that's a national football coach, uh, captain that should be Anthony Modest. And still with football, Grenada and Antigua Barbuda paid to a two-all draw in their friendly engagement on Friday at the National Stadium. Over 2,000 fans were on hand for the game, which highlighted the opening of the 2011 GFA season. Grenada began impressively, scoring in the third minute through striker Clive Murray and certainly had the better of the exchanges during the first period. But uh, changes were made in the second half, which saw several overseas-based players rested for some home-based players, which certainly affected the team. Murray scored again at the start of the second half to give Grenada a 2-0 advantage, but the visitors fought back to score in the 75th and 83rd minutes to even the contest. Meanwhile, the Lion Parad meantime, Lion Paradise made an encouraging start to the 2011 GFA season, beating Newham, uh, Newham GBSS two goals to one in the opening game, the opening Premier League fixture last week Friday at the National Stadium. Wendell Rennie scored uh, first in the 20th minute after pouncing on a, in the six-yard box to slot home a rebound from a shot he had initially struck from about 12 meters out. Uh, Rennie, who ran the GBSS defense ragged, struck again in the 42nd minute, just before the interval, to leave uh, put his team two goals to nil up before the break. Uh, GBSS pressed on in the second period, but Paradise stood firm in what turned out to be a gripping contest. Uh, striker Nigel Bishop scored for GBSS from a goal mouth scramble in added time, which by then was too late as Paradise ran away winners. Uh, well, according to reports, only four uh, the four Premier League matches scheduled for last weekend did not take place, and the GFA is attempting to find out the reason or reasons why this did not happen and take appropriate action. The GFA is making a concerted effort to organize a successful season this year after problems last year, which led to the suspension of the season. Over $120,000 are up for grabs in the 2011 Premier League Championship with some $30,000 earmarked for the winner. you got to play the matches if you want to win the contest. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites. Shop on.
online at your favorite stores around the world and your package will be delivered to your doorstep right here in Grenada. The Grenada Postal Corporation brings you closer to the rest of the world with GPC Global. GPC Global is a new, exciting, and cost-effective service. For less than $20 US, you can have your own personal mailbox in the US and off you go shopping. You can view your shipment as it moves 24-7 with up-to-the-minute tracking. Make your purchase and GPC Global will do the rest, even customs clearance. We make it easy and hassle-free. GPC Global, the world at your fingertips. Dependable, reliable, and safe. It's the Eucharistic Passover for men as we seek to help men play their leadership roles in their homes, church, and communities. Theme, Yahweh call it the man. Adam, where are you? It's a call for men to take stock of their respective lives. This year, the men journey to the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, June 18 and 19. Guest speaker, Father Roy Lee from the USA. There'll be music, song, and dance by our young men. Registration fee, $50, and covers lunch for both days. So get involved. Inspire your youth or men's group in your parish to participate in the Eucharistic Passover for Men at the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, Saturday, June 18 and Sunday, June 19 from 9 a.m. Recapping the main points in tonight's news, the Bureau of Standards issues recall of portable cribs, judicial manager appointed for Clico International Life in Grenada, and Petro Carib partners with the government to illuminate lives and energize hope. In sports, Grenada wins Windward Islands Win Lotto 2020 cricket competition. This has been another edition of the GIS News Hour for Monday, May 30th, 2011. I am Abigail McIntyre, thanking you for joining us. watching the Government Information Service Channels 12 and 22.